Hey guys, welcome to another exciting episode of C++ HTML algorithms. In today's episode, we will be looking at some algorithms provided by HTML algorithms library to manage a data structure, a very popular data structure called heap. Now, for those who don't know what a heap is, you should look into some resources. But for a general introduction, I can give you this. A heap is a tree-like data structure. In our case, it will be a binary tree. That means every parent node will have two children and uh, it will follow a property called the heap property now the heap property can be explained in many ways but the two common or very popular heaps are max heap and mean heap now, in max heap the heap property suggests that every parent node should have the greatest value uh, with respect to the child nodes so as you can see 40 is greater than both 10 and 15 and 50 is the greatest among 50 40 and 50 so the parent node value should be greatest and in case of mean heap it's quite opposite the parent node value should be the least value among the children and the that parent which are having that children so in our case we can represent a heap in many ways a very common way to represent a heap is using an array in this implementation that i am going to show you we will be using vector and it will contain the values of uh, and as you can see this is a particular this implementation is a mean heap because the 5 and 9 are less than 3 and 3 and 6 they are less than 1 and as you can see that mean heap is represented in an array format uh, having the heap property and uh, the main benefit of using a heap is that you can use this heap as a priority queue you will see in just a few moments and apart from that there are many implementations in C++ using or in programming in general where heap gives you a very interesting advantage than other data structures one is for sorting very larger amount of data even the STL sorting algorithm the sort function it itself uses heap whenever the data size is too much because heap can allow you in place sorting and you don't need to allocate more space to sort the data that in terms saves some space in your RAM so without further delay let's get started by including uh, c l u d e uh, sorry by including the algorithm and also by including our vector library for our standard container now let's have our heap so we can simply uh, declare our heap as a vector of integers and by default the C++ heap is considered as a max heap so first of all we will be looking everything from a max heap perspective so we can say this as heap 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 and let our heap contain some values let's say uh, 3 2 1 5 6 okay so to create a heap we will be using a function called make heap which by default will make us a uh, max heap uh, and it will take two arguments one is the beginning iterator that is our in our case heap.begin and the end iterator that is heap.end to our heap and what it will do is it will convert the unarranged data into an arranged data that is the heap so max heap in general so if we want to print this max heap what we can do is we can uh, simply write a for loop so for int x belongs to our heap i simply want to see out x and then an end line okay so now if we run this code you can see that the data itself has actually arranged as a heap so if you want me to explain this you can see that uh, the five, 6 is the root node and 6 has two children 5 and 1 which are obviously less than 6 and also uh, 5 have two children 3 and 2 which are obviously less than 5 
so this is how we can typically make a uh, max heap using the make heap function so to include a new e member into the heap in our case we will be including let's say 9 so we will say heap dot pushback 9 so we, to include a new member into heap what we can do is we can include the new value and then call make heap function but make we, make heap function itself creates an entire heap so it will do much more abundant steps uh, and to reduce those steps and only use the required amount of time that is necessary to insert only 9 the required amount of rearrangement into the heap that is only required to make the heap we can use a function called push heap and it's same like make heap because it will take the iterators to the beginning of the heap and uh, iterator to the last item that has been pushed to the heap but heap but uh, remember this push heap considers all the items before the last item to already be in a form of heap and only it inserts the last item into the heap just like the push back function so if we run this code now uh, 9 should be the root node that means 9 should be the first node and as you can see here the 9 is itself is the root node and this is how push heap typically works now what we want to do is we want to remove an element from the heap and to do that what we can do is we can call pop heap so we will say pop heap and what pop heap will do will it will remove the element uh, first of all we need to give the range of the heap to the pop heap function these are almost very much same in general and uh, as you can see if you look at the output it has popped the first element out of the heap and it has put that element at the last slot as 9 so uh, um, last slot and so the first element the root node has been successfully popped out of the heap and now to clean up this what we can simply do is we can just call heap dot pop back and it will completely make a heap then it will completely push a value into the heap and then it will completely remove a value from the heap so this is how you typically can use a heap there are some more functions that you can use in case of a heap so the first uh, let me comment this so this is for pushing a value and this is for pop the root node from the heap and now we want to check whether our range itself is actually a heap or not so to check that what we can say we can simply call is heap to know whether our uh, range is a heap so I can provide the range here the beginning and the end iterator and it will return a boolean to us uh, and naming that as is and I can say that if is then I can say that uh, see out this is a heap and then we can say end line now uh, if we run this code we can see because we have run the max heap function and then we have used poop heap, uh, push heap and pop heap we can see that this data structure is indeed a heap if you want to know wh uh, why this is in a heap because 6 has 2 children 5 and 1 and 5 and 1 both are less than 6 and then 5 have 2 children 3 and 2 and 3 and 2 are less than 5 so obviously this is a max heap now let's say and there is another function before that we want to cover that and that is is heap until so what is heap until returns is an iterator so we can simply uh, uh, put this range here and what we can do is we can have uh, an uh, vector of int iterator because uh, this heap is using a vector as its base container so we will say vector of int and colon colon iterator I will call it it and it simply is equals to our is heap until 
so basically what is hip until means is it specifies how much till uh, the uh, the data structure is maintained as a heap so i will push some uh, random values into the heap uh, before we call this function to see uh, till which the data structure is heap so i will push 11 19 and 92 inside the heap and now i can simply say that this uh, we will say c out is heap until until and we will uh, simply get the value by derefer by dereferencing the iterator on the iterator that's uh, returned by uh, e until function so if we run this now we can see that it's heap until 92 okay and as you can see uh, that uh, the 92 it's uh, and 6 is the root node i didn't print the end so 6 is here then uh, 5 2 and so on and as you can see uh, until 2 the heap is maintained because we called last time a uh, heap function uh, when we had these values and after that 92 11 and 19 they are not were in uh, the heap data structure so easy until return 92 and obviously i didn't put a end l so end line so 6 is here okay so don't get confused so now uh, this is looking a little bit ugly so i can remove these things and we can see how we can uh, actually use a mean heap instead of a max heap this time so to make a mean heap what we need we need to specify the mean heap behavior so to specify the behavior i will declare a function a lambda function and you can use uh, std function if you want to use but i will be using auto because auto can deduct what the type actually is so i will say auto and our function i will call it fn uh, the, uh, this is the predicate function and in case of heap it only takes one argument uh, it takes actually two arguments to compare between so first of all we will declare our lambda function and it will uh, compare between two ints called int a and int b for our heap and in the comparison in case of max heap the default comparison was where that the parent node were greater than the child node and in case of mean heap uh, i will give, give a colon to end this function here we will return this behavior turn sorry return this behavior that is a is less than b now i can't really remember that uh, the way this works so we can indeed have a max heap instead of a mean heap and that's fine but we can use this definition as the last argument to our heap functions we can use this as our last argument to all the heap functions we have seen so far so if we run this code we will see that yeah indeed this is a max heap <laughs> what i uh, initially thought and if we just uh, reverse this uh, sign here okay so it was uh, less than that was a was less than b now if i uh, uh, write that a is greater than b then this should return us indeed a uh, mean heap instead of a max heap so now if we run this code you will see that indeed it's returning us a mean heap 2 is less than 5 and 3 and 5 is less than 9 and 6 so indeed this is a mean heap so these are the basically those functions that you can typically use to create a heap and uh, maintain a heap that's it for today guys hope you have enjoyed this video if you have really enjoyed this video please hit a like uh, it motivates me to make such kinds of videos and thank you very much